Appendix 1, Four Fasting Testimonies from my book, Feasting and Fasting, What Works, What Doesn't, and Why, that we are putting on Audible and also releasing as video casting as well, westsidechristianfellowship.org. But I want to read to you these four incredible fasting testimonies, and then I'm actually going to give you some sermons that will help and keep you motivated, and then also some books that I recommend as well. Fasting is difficult and grueling for the mind and body. However, both were refreshed, cleansed, and invigorated afterwards, and they still are five days later. I had a lot of energy the next day, and I could think clearly. During the last eight days, I've experienced an incredible amount of healing taking place in my marriage. In retrospect, I did not realize how broken my marriage had become. I had never felt so close to God and been so in tune with His will for me in my life. Paula wrote that. Next, I was fasting and seeking God for a few years, and I simply prayed at one point and asked God, how could I get closer to him? I immediately heard the answer back internally, as clearly as if someone was speaking to me saying, stop taking drugs. <laughs> I was so surprised. I answered back saying, I don't take any drugs. What do you mean? One word clearly came to my mind, and that word was caffeine. So I quickly went online and looked it up and was blown away about just how serious a drug it actually is and how it can affect people so negatively, health-wise and in other areas. Thank you, WCF, which is Westside Christian Fellowship, for your ministry. That was by Mike, and I know Mike, and I think he's still doing great all these years later. Next, I kept trying to fast, but I also kept falling and failing. Sound familiar? Welcome to fasting. That's why you get up and you keep fighting. However, once I prayed for strength and made up my mind to finish, God pulled me through. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in regard to health, but the power outweighed the pain. My relationship with God and my prayer life were reignited. Praise God. He is a rewarder of those who seek him with diligence and perseverance. That was Chris. Fasting has changed my life in an amazing way. And now I know exactly why it is so hard to do. It puts you in alignment with God and Satan hates it. I had a temper with my family, getting upset with stupid little things, yelling over nothing. My family was suffering from it. I knew I needed to change. And I heard caffeine played a huge role in mood swings. Guys, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not cherry picking anything. I'm just reading these testimonies. So I started fasting from soda and my attitude improved. Then I fasted from coffee and cut out caffeine. After that, God really calmed my spirit and helped me think about what came out of my mouth before I said anything. Then I decided to fast for two days on water only, but that turned into four God really convicted me on the way I was treating my family. How can I go to church and portray a Christ-like life but yell at my wife and kids and have them fear me while at home? So I cried out to God to change my heart, and he did. I felt a massive shift of peace and love take over, and my anger is totally controllable. I'm not going to say it's gone completely, but God changed my heart through fasting. I'm so grateful for that. That was Jack. So the sermons I want to recommend, you can find them on Vimeo, and we're going to be uploading them, I believe, to YouTube as well, our YouTube channels and Rumble. So if you struggle with discipline and you need some motivation, these sermons will help. Now, granted, the first message I gave on fasting was overcoming addictions through fasting, and that was back in 2011. And at that point, I was 45 pounds heavier than when I wrote the book. You can also check my progression. You know, you'll see my progression through a lot of these sermons as the years went on. This is appendix number two, recommended sermons. Appendix number two, recommended sermons. The fasting forum, the fasting forum, that should come up for you. Another title, Lean Mean Fasting Machine. Another title, The Pain of Discipline Over the Pain of Regret. Another title, Health, What Does the Bible Say? That's an important one as well. And again, if you put these titles in along with my name, they should pop up. Fasting over forks, part one. Fasting over forks, part two. The hidden treasure of fasting. Fasting, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Fasting, they found the secret. This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Next title, fasting breaks enslavement. Next title, overcoming addiction through 
fasting, overcoming addiction through fasting. That's the last one there I gave in 2011. So the newest ones are the first ones I mentioned and then down older. So there's 12 sermons there that will help. Appendix number three, recommended reading, recommended reading. Okay. Now I need to say up front, I don't agree with everything these people say. Uh, some of the books I might recommend, I don't know if I, there's any in here, but they'll talk about evolution in it. So what you do is you pick out the, the great stuff and throw out the junk. Uh, but I think most of these books are really solid. So if I see something that rings a bell, I will share that with you. But number one, Breaking the Stronghold of Food. Breaking the Stronghold of Food by Dr. Michael Brown. It's an exceptional and well-written Christian book from a Christian perspective. It doesn't focus on fasting per se, but on the important element of a healthy diet. Fasting Can Save Your Life by Herbert M. Shelton is recognized as one of the all-time bestsellers on fasting. I think it's an older book too, so some of the information is dated. This book is a valuable resource, even though it was written many years ago. Science has made many advances since its first publication, but the principles are timeless. Next, what does the Bible say about healthy living by Rex Russell? And also we'll recommend The Maker's Diet by Jordan Rubin. Both are compelling resources for those wanting more information regarding what the Bible says about food. Now, they grant more liberty than I do on certain areas, but overall, those are great resources. Next is God's Chosen Fast, God's Chosen Fast by Arthur Wallace. It's an exceptional resource that covers a lot more than what I can cover in my short book. He goes on to talk a lot more about the spiritual benefits of fasting. Next resource is Fast Your Way to Health. Fast Your Way to Health by J. Harold Smith. It outlines the physical and the spiritual benefits of fasting. And I appreciate his simple and straightforward approach. And I think this is a book that I recommend earlier in my book, this audio version, when I talk about he lost 44 pounds in 28 days because he was very active. But that might not have been too good because that means definitely a lot of muscle was converted into energy because he was he was moving at a faster pace than the body could keep up with. And of course, muscles broken down in a process called gluconeogenesis and uh, gluco, glucose, neogenesis out of nothing. So glucose out of nothing basically converts it from your muscle. The next resource, The Power of Prayer and Fasting by a friend of mine, Ronnie Floyd. It's an encouraging book for the pulpit as well as the pew. We're actually featuring it this month in January 2024. He's speaking at our church. Although he's a pastor and talks about his 40-day Jews fast experience, men and women from all walks of life can benefit from this resource, especially if you're hungry for revival. Next resource, A Hunger for God by John Piper is captivating and convicting. It focuses on desiring God more through fasting and prayer. And then Fasting by Gordon Cove includes examples of people who fasted in the Bible and what the outcome was. It's encouraging, it's motivating, and it was convicting. The Complete Guide to Fasting is another good resource, but again, this is written from someone who is not a believer. The title is The Complete Guide to Fasting, Heal Your Body Through Intermittent, Alternate Day, and Extended Fasting by Jimmy Moore and Dr. Jason Fung. Again, a non-biblical resource, but it's a good resource to truly understand how the body works, especially if you're struggling with diabetes, cancer, or heart disease. Although I don't agree with Dr. Fung's stance on evolution, and some of Jimmy Moore's statements, eat the meat and throw out the bones. No pun intended for my plant-based diet friends. Uh, this book is lengthy and meaty and encourages heavy, heavy lifting. It also encourages coffee consumption and things like that, which I don't agree with. What you'll find with caffeine and coffee is those who love their addiction will say, yeah, it's okay, it's fine with fasting. And, and to some degree, it is in regard to autophagy, remaining ketogenic. But it's uh, just, you're trying to slow down the heart. You're trying to rest. So I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. You're giving yourself a central nervous stimulant, but the whole point of fasting is to rest. It's counterproductive. But we love good news about our bad habits, keep our addictions. And fasting, I think, should be a time of, of getting rid of all this stuff. So I want to pray for those who've been listening this far. There's a probably, I'd say, 15 or so podcasts now from this book. This is the final one. Lots of encouraging information. The key is to fall forward, get back up, focus on your relationship with God, clean living, moderation, a lot of things I just talked about in the last podcast I did, so I don't want to belabor the point. But let me pray for you. Lord, I just ask that those who are listening 
would be inspired, encouraged, and convicted, Lord, that they would make changes in not only their own personal life, but those, they would be an an instrument of change in the lives of those around them, especially parents. Parents, Lord, we've got these precious little lives that we can steer in the wrong direction or the right direction when it comes to health and nutrition. So God, I pray for those with diabetes and and cancer and, and heart disease and struggling with brain trauma or even illness of the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia. God, would you would you heal them in Jesus' name? And would you also show them, convict them, show them if there are some diet and lifestyle changes that they can make that would aid this healing process, Lord. So I just, I give you this book, I give you this audio version as well, Lord, and just use it in a powerful and profound way to help and motivate and encourage and uplift. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. All right, folks. It was a long read, I'll tell you, but it was worth it. I hope you are benefited from it, and we would love to hear from you. You can contact our church at westsidechristianfellowship.org, westsidechristianfellowship.org, and let us know how this book has inspired and impacted your life. Thank you.